You know, Patty, I recently got an idea that uh, I that I want to create a global community of bold and awesome non-native English speaking imposters. We uh, non-native English speakers, we very often feel that insecurity. And as I work with people, I see uh, this is everywhere. And I... Hi, Patty. I am great. Happy to be here with you. Yes, this is long overdue. So happy you <laughs> said yes. <laughs> oh, this is like the pleasure <laughs> is all mine. I'm just, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Yes, we're going to have a very good time. My dear friend, wherever you are, <laughs> I met Lana while I was spending a month in Warsaw, Poland last summer. I uh, was looking for a Toastmasters club to visit connected with her on Facebook, and she was so welcoming and wonderful that I went to visit her club, Poland First Toastmasters. Yay! <laughs> yes! We connected and have remained in contact ever since. Let me introduce Lana Ivanova to you. Number one, Lana is a communication coach, business trainer, and a TEDx speaker's mentor. After leaving the organizational consulting sphere, she helps people find their unique communication style and express themselves openly. Her primary goal is to support non-natives from different backgrounds to speak up in English and tell their own stories. She is a longtime member of Toastmasters International and a few times president of Poland's first Toastmasters, which is a club in Warsaw, Poland that I just mentioned. And she believes in the power of lightness and small continuous changes. This approach transformed her from a shy girl from the frozen edge of the world to being a participant in international public speaking contests and conferences and a coach who unmutes people. Imagine that. <laughs> Number two, she is a best-selling Amazon author. She was recently featured in the book, The Butterfly Effect. Please get a copy right here. <laughs> Finally, number three, she, most importantly, Lana is a wife and a mother of two kids. <laughs> I have talked enough. Lana, can yeah. you tell us? <laughs> yeah, you ready? <laughs> can you tell us about little Lana as a young girl? What was it like to be in her shoes, please? Um, yeah, <laughs> I can. Um. So um, you mentioned that I was born uh, at the edge of the world. I sometimes tell like this, um, my story, because I was born in the far north east of Russia, in Yakutia, Sahara Republic. And actually, this is the coldest place on earth. Oh. <laughs> yes. And uh, so I was a little girl who was living there in a small frozen city, just nearby a huge hole in the ground because my small city uh, town, I would say, was, you know, it was named the capital of diamonds uh, for the country because diamonds were mined there and we had a huge pit nearby the town. And uh, the pit was so big and is so big that you could, you know, grab all the buildings in the town and put them there inside because it's 1.2 kilometers wide. And yeah, it was just huge. And I was, you know, <laughs> having such a huge hole in the ground nearby. Sometimes you fly <laughs> over uh, when you fly somewhere. <clears throat> And you just you look there and you understand how small you are. And uh, I was thinking uh, like like that sometimes that I live somewhere, uh, no in the in the nowhere. <laughs> it was all snow around. It was winter for nine months uh, a year, and temperature was sometimes so severe. For example, 
I was supposed still to go to school when it was minus 53 Celsius. Uh, yes, in, in, high, <laughs> in, the high, in the high school, I was still supposed to go to school. Minus 54, I could have stayed at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but I was happy there. I, d I didn't know uh, like what is going on uh, in the big world. And uh, even traveling to the big world, we sometimes, you know, were naming that my parents were telling, like, we go to the mainland, we go to the mainland. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I, that was a little bit of a fairy tale. Okay. So did you have any siblings? Yes, I have. Um, I have a sister, a brother, and one more brother. <laughs> Just, yeah, we are half uh uh, siblings and actually for example i was supposed to go to take my brother sometimes he's six years younger than me to the kindergarten then i was going to school and uh along our way <laughs> you know i created my first magic <laughs> because uh my uh, he taught me how to do that and even since then maybe i'm such a fan of storytelling because my brother we were once traveling uh like i was taking him to to the kindergarten and he said look what can i what i can do and i see i uh, just i just asked what can you do he was so small he was like four years old and he was you know narrowing narrowing his eyes looking at the street lights mm -hmm. he said i can i can make all stars round so i can lead the stars <laughs> and you know sometimes i tell that story and this story um is one of the stories i adore because it shows like in the every moment of the time you can create your own story mm -hmm. and you can lead your own star yeah yes yeah. here is my <laughs> story <Yeah. laughs> and would you would you say that you were a shy girl you said you were a shy girl so you were not open or comfortable in public uh yeah i was i had like one friend at school and i was not so you know fond of speaking to people too much although i liked um uh occasionally to be in the spotlight so i was good in reading poetry uh, and but I never, ever, you know, like volunteered to do that. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that only happened if somebody just grabbed me and turned and me course. off stage. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I was not super. I was not noted anywhere in the big crowd. In the big crowds, uh, especially in the middle of the big crowd, never. I was the same. I was really not very popular. You know, the kid that gets selected last. In uh, in sporting events, when you, they have to make a team at school to play sports, yeah, yeah. I was mm -hmm. always one of the last ones to be picked, and I always made sure I did not get noticed because I was extremely shy. So I could totally can <laughs> connect with what you just said. And uh, you know, this is the this is true also sometimes for people in the adult life. Like we grow up and we are still a little bit shy, and sometimes we want to be n not noticed. And uh, so also because of that, I do what I do. Mm -hmm. I mute people. I help them to bring that, um, you know, to bring that desire for themselves to be noticed. Mm. So, yes. yes, and we need people like you. Precisely because so many people, there are a lot, you see a lot of negativity or like things coming out from in social media, for instance. Some people have the microphone and they're speaking loud, but then we have good people, nice people, but they're muted, right? So it yeah. is important to unmute certain people with a good heart, good soul, so that they can speak and at least balance the world a, l a little bit. So I think it's very important. Absolutely. I'm, I'm totally with you here. And yes, I, I do what I can. Let's do that together. <laughs> because yes. you do things with your uh, podcast and with your YouTube channel and your journey overall. Oh, you're so sweet. Yes, we need people like, like yes, we need, we need this. The world needs this. Just more love, more positivity. So um, what was, that brings me to my next question. What was the turning point that made you decide to go visit a public speaking club for the first time? I mean, why? Why did you put yourself through this? <laughs> <laughs> through this. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for this wonderful torture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, many, many years ago, uh, like I think it was 2006, I moved to Ukraine from Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Ukraine, I started a new career. First, I was interpreter. And then somehow, occasionally, <laughs> I um, 
I I started to be into a business trainer, like internal consultant, and I was certified with one um, one U.S. Institute of Management, a business institute, which were, that was amazing methodology mm -hmm. to turn around the companies and you know to improve uh, the company's performance with the amazing things like uh, corporate culture and you know changing the culture, changing the processes inside, and. In one moment of the time, I just noticed that I do a lot of um, that sort of consulting stuff inside this, like my uh, home company and one more later. And I want to do something like something more soulful. Mm -hmm. So I've been business trainer at that moment. And I, I was doing that um, diagnosis of the company, organizational conceals for their change, uh, change management and so on and so forth. And I just felt I want something for my heart additionally, mm. something more soulful maybe. And also I had a little bit of imposter syndrome being a um, corporate trainer and being pretty young at that moment. So I went to Toastmasters uh, that was in Odessa. There was only one club, <laughs> Toastmasters club in Odessa. So I went there to um, to deal with my imposter syndrome like partially being a trainer and not always being sure in my ability to run big groups of people. Mm. I was doing that, but sometimes I was still hesitant. Mm. <laughs> and second uh, point was to go into a little bit more personal area, like storytelling, sharing personal stories, connect uh, different people's stories. And I was just, you know, passionate about that. So I went to Toastmasters and that was Oh my God, many years ago, more than 10, 11 years ago. And I'm still with Toastmasters. This is my big hobby. And now living in Poland, in Warsaw, I, we met there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still a member of Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my life passion so far. Mm. I always say, Lana, I'm going to be a Toastmaster until I die. <laughs> like I'll see myself when I'll be 80 years old and I still want to mentor people and participate in my club. And till it, yes, it's it's a community, right? It's not just a place where we learn how, uh, how we practice speech, uh, speaking and being leaders. It's it's a community. And the same thing, you know, I traveled, Paul and I, I knew nobody there. And I contacted you and I was welcome like I was, you know, in my own club. And I can go anywhere on the planet. Uh, in the Yes, on yes. The planet. it's just yeah. wonderful. So yes. Yes, and you. Can, by the way, you came to our club. You rocked our impromptu session. <laughs> <laughs> Won the table topics award. Yes, and I love doing that as well. And I truly believe Toastmasters. Uh, that is a great community of people. Mm -hmm. And actually, Toastmasters. Uh, this was my method to find friends when I started new life uh, twice from the scratch. You know, mm -hmm. Toastmasters was always there, like a great source of amazing people. I don't know, somehow great people come next. <laughs> yes, because we want, we're prepared to step out from our comfort zone and we to explore what else can be done. How can we be better? How can we grow? So it's all people who are prepared to invest in themselves to do more. Yes. That's what we have in common anywhere on the planet. So Yes, you start with that public speaking and a little bit of leadership component, but then you just stuck there with uh, amazing people, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, okay. You and I were clearly sold on this, but let's just say someone is watching us right now, yeah. either on your continent or on mine or wherever else. <laughs> what is your best advice for someone who is terrified of speak, uh, speaking in public or in front of a camera, but doesn't see the value in joining a public speaking group or program? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've, this is so simple for me. I've been talking to my friend recently and he's he runs um he's actually from Australia and he runs international company. And this is international startup and we were you know discussing uh startup pitchers and whether entrepreneurs are ready to go to communication coaches and pitch coaches to help them to you know to train themselves to make perfect great pitchers like maybe not perfect but uh, 
uh, engaging pictures, um, effective pictures. And he said, like I said, you know, sometimes I see they're not so like fond of that idea to go to coach and to get that skill nailed. I said, you know, uh, for me, this is so simple. And whether you will just fail a few times, like you will get that bumps. <laughs> and, and after that, you will understand and you will pay higher price because you will have all that mistakes and you will miss the opportunity several times. And then you will understand and come there. And or you can go the shortcut and that would be my advice to everyone. So you can go the long way and, um, you know, wait until some uh, some illumination will happen with you or, you know, some additional luck will happen or you can make a shortcut. And for example, Toastmasters is a brilliant shortcut for everyone who is even a little bit afraid of public speaking and Actually, this is a great friendly place to come and to practice. I Sometimes I do not even understand how it can exist, you know. And people come to us. Um, so now I'm, I'm already in Toastmasters area. And they're so surprised. We are non-profit, right? And how this place can exist? My colleagues, uh, trainers in the corporate area, they're like, how this place can exist? Yeah. <laughs> so whether you take a long way or you take a short way this is your decision but i would suggest you to make a shortcut mm. yes to the shortcut lana <laughs> <laughs> um, i would love to pick your brain you know i invite guests who inspire me and who are just making a huge difference so you're a professional okay and as a communication coach what would be your three best tips on how to be a memorable speaker please Hmm. <laughs> Three best tips. Um, I, I, you know, I will go simple. Um, what I see a lot, uh, like sometimes people think, uh, that they can make a marvelous speech, like a lot of um great ideas, put a lot of great ideas there, and you know. Sometimes I see that everything crashes and crumbles uh, in the delivery, in the delivery point. And um, there is a huge battle often between all the professionals, like what is more important, content or delivery, content or delivery. So what would you pick, Patty? <laughs> uh, content. I don't want to deliver something that's not meaningful. So content, and then I, I would work on the delivery after. Yeah, but you know what happens? I'm invited. This is a great answer. And uh, this is absolutely right. You know, the ideal uh, point is mm -hmm. where you have both, right? Yes. What I see is going on. People have really great content. They usually choose content. Uh, but delivery, like, where is it? Because, you know, for example, if you are a brilliant mind, but as we talked in the beginning of our uh, talk here, you speak really like you know like that nobody listens to you and you by by the way you yourself you do not want to be listened to because you don't want people to pay attention yes. <laughs> otherwise they will start judging you and all this stuff yes so i'm you know um i'm from that uh another area <laughs> like from another camp mm -hmm. people who think about delivery a lot of course, I presume that there is a content, valuable one. Uh, so I would think about delivery and three points will hit into that. My three points will hit there. So first, think about um, pauses and breathing. Mm. It was, um, I see it so, uh, very often. So people rush to speak uh, and do not make pauses at all. I struggle with that. Yes. Yes. And uh, sometimes uh, when I talk to, uh, I prepare people for the speeches, I said, pause in the very, I say, pause in the very beginning. Yes, pause in the very beginning. And then, you know, allow yourself that luxury to take a few pauses when you speak <laughs> as well. You will give people time to process what you've said, or, you know, you will create, um, uh, you know, that tension. Uh, you will create some, something intriguing there with a the pause sometimes. So I would say pause, breathe. That would be my first advice. Second advice is mind your opening and closing. So that should be just perfect. 
Uh, I never recommend no one to learn by heart what you're going to say, mm -hmm. but opening and closing is crucial. Mm -hmm. So mind your opening and your closing. And a third point would be storytelling. So use some storytelling in a very special manner. So do not tell, you know, the hero Johnny story <laughs> for half an hour. Uh, make a short, sharp, concise, and clear stories with a um, with an effective punchline. So that would be my idea. To take your stories, craft them into something catchy and make a punchline. So pause and breathe, uh, open and close strong and storytell. So these are my free advices. I love it. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. I'm taking notes, Lana, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. I would uh, like to ask you some questions to help out our ladies out there, if possible. <laughs> so if you could, because I know you do a lot of work with women as well. If you could give some advice to a woman who feels she's not uh, where she needs to be in her life and wants to improve her circumstances, but she doesn't know how, what mm -hmm. would it be? I would say look for example, inspiration and mentoring. Mm. Um, I think we we have actually a big trend right now for sisterhood. So mm. previously that was not uh, like, now I see it just like on a rise. And uh, I think we should benefit from that and uh, be uh, bold enough to go out uh, to look for the um, for the examples of other stories, of stories of our uh, other women who inspire us, and um, look for I don't know bodies uh, for uh, business bodies, uh, for career bodies, or look for for the mentor, and you can easier approach people now than in previous like any previous era right because now all the world is opened and you can take one attempt uh, another attempt uh, just you can try a lot of times uh, just for example right now i'm in close cooperation with my uh, online business bestie and we even launch uh, something together in parallel Okay. And we plan to to make that in a strong cooperation, although we are in the same area. And I think that is absolutely amazing. So we do not consider ourselves as uh, competitors, but we do that together. Because I know uh, people who want to work with me, they will work with, with me. And who want to work with her, we are just, uh, we are completely um, different personalities. And people uh, are looking for the personalities. So I would say, look for your bodies, mentors, and inspiration in our other women. And go out there take action to build your own story being inspired by others oh my goodness it's just so beautiful i think i'm gonna cry <laughs> oh my it's god so yeah. it's actually actually yeah i'm you are you are a great example as well uh, so i'm grateful to you so much uh, like that uh, even being here talking to you and mm. you know uh, I remember that you were telling in your story that you were hesitant whether you, in the beginning of your story, right, mm -hmm. uh, of your journey, whether you have enough uh, to tell to the to world and whether you have right to, I don't know, even to go interview people, but you're doing, so, like, you're bringing so much value to the world. I just, I just. I just want to mention that one more time. I admire you. <laughs> She's so sweet. No, I love that. I'm going to tell you why I love this so much, what you just said, because we live in a world that is so competitive. You know, everybody feels like, you know, they have to make it and they have to make it on their own. No, there are like so many resources out there, people who want. That's why I love the organization. But people want, with those masters, especially, I find people, they want to help you. We're all helping, helping each other. You have a speech, you have something. Let me help you. Everybody wants to help somebody. Just for the sake of helping, you understand? Not to, to get anything. And there's a room, that's the thing that I love. You just mentioned how you and your, your bestie, you're together and you're not competitors because she has her own special sauce and you have your own Lana sauce, you know? And together, like yes. the people who will be drawn to you will not be drawn to me, will not be drawn to somebody else. And we can talk about the exact same subject, 
you know, but with our own personal stories, it becomes just something complete, a different product and a different service altogether because we just we, were in it. So it's important to have this attitude of service. And I love, love, love that you said that really. Um, Thank you. Know. Yes. I, uh, for me, that was uh, a sort of, in you know, like inside because I was probably a bit competitive as well, like uh, some time ago, like years ago but for me that was um, a relief and freeing th yes. thought that uh this is all energy and we are all interconnected and you know uh, that abundance feeling of the world so and i just um i'm so glad to be in that flow yes and it's so true because when we hold on to a lot of things we're limiting ourselves you know the wider you open you cast your net the more fish you'll get the more you can make a difference. So yeah, good. Oh, this is so inspiring. <laughs> you're a very busy lady, Lana. <laughs> you're a speaker, you're a coach, you're a club president, a wife, a mother, and so much more. <laughs> uh, I love how you said before that you had to secure your children <laughs> before we met here. Yeah, just before them, we met. <laughs> yes. yes. So how do you stay balanced with everything that you do? Please do share. <laughs> First of all, you see, I'm prepared. <laughs> I had a podcast I had a podcast interview a month ago and I've been doing I've been talking to um to the host like that and my daughter just came into the room she started to walk around me looking for the charger for her phone like she's like moving my table and probably she thought I was um a bit, you know the world is so much mixed right now we walk from home mm -hmm. like uh and right now I'm at home as well so and of course, we are supposed to juggle a little bit with all this stuff and to be organized. Now, uh, since that moment, I know for sure that I need to define what is going on with <laughs> in the next room to my daughter, <laughs> specifically for her to understand whether it is simple, I don't know, client meeting and she can go and a little bit move my table. <laughs> oh, preferably not. <laughs> so... Mm, I um, I try to uh, to plan uh, crucial things and I try to so of course I have my calendar and I have uh, uh, like big stones first in the calendar and then uh, smaller stones and then the sand like it is said mm -hmm. so you know that theory yes, right I do yes that yeah so I put there uh, the crucial things to my calendar and but I try to uh, to leave. Uh, a lot of time for being flexible so mm -hmm. some things I plan for example uh, I don't know our interview for sure we meet uh, in certain time I meet in certain time with my client at certain time with my clients and uh, I have trainings I need to conduct <laughs> so so that is why that all is planned mm -hmm. but I like to have an air in my schedule and I I want to know when I have so when I can have that, you know, like free time. And also sometimes I start my calendar with things which can bring me energy. Mm. For example, I don't know, time with my family. I can plan that ahead or I can plan ahead my training. So I also had training just before our, <laughs> our meeting here. Now it's evening in Warsaw and I, it was all planned for me. Like mm -hmm. I will have my training. I will have my time to organize everything for our interview. Now we, ha we are having an interview and my kids are aware of what is going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and also, you know, uh, when you know why you're doing everything you do, it helps a lot. So um, I'm pretty much uh, all the time inspired uh, by people and I'm social animal just yeah I can say <laughs> openly I'm social animal yeah. and you know um what I do is connected with people all the time mm -hmm. and I get energy from that and that is why I keep moving and my engine is you know like really working really smooth yes yes and it shows Lana it shows you're always shining you know like a little sunshine <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun to see you go and whenever I see you on social media popping up I'm like makes me want to smile or laugh or it's like it's really good uh, good energy wonderful energy thank you dear 
Um, oh, of course, it is not always like that because I have my ups and downs. Uh, oh, you're human. Also, you're human. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. You're not an extraterrestrial <laughs> luckily, being. <laughs> <luckily>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's normal. But the thing is, you show up, you know, in a certain way consistently, you know, and it's. Oh, yeah. Thank you for noticing that. And I think that is probably because uh, when I show up, I do that with intention. And uh, usually I imagine people to whom I speak and, you know, being a social animal, uh, it brings uh, the energy. Yes. And it attracts the same energy as well. You know? Oh, <laughs> I, I see here are some power plants. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> So, okay, you're launching the next edition of your Speaker Defreeze course in June 2023. Uh, yeah. So very soon. The course is entirely online and dedicated to helping people build their personal confidence system for getting ready for any public appearances. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the your process, please? Thank you so much for asking. And uh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, that that is a course I created this year in the beginning of this year. Um, then after after series of uh, interviews with my clients, when I you know I usually have um, have interviews before I start working with people, and what I noticed very often, even though people come for better presentations, uh, captivating talks. Very often uh, we talk and we eventually uh, come to that insecurities. Mm -hmm. Like uh, a, a lot of people are not really confident when they speak in public, then they're exposed uh, to at least a couple of <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so, and I, I just thought, I can make something that, with that. And I came up with the idea of that course. Also because every time I was coming to any companies making training, whatever it was, storytelling, present on camera. Mm -hmm. And I got all the time an additional question on confidence, mm -hmm. like uh, how to decrease the stress level. And every time I was doing some additional part on that, and I decided just to take that and to focus on that specifically and to, to create that course. Uh, this is a speaker defreeze uh, four weeks course, which is all dedicated to creating a certain system, uh, personal system of confidence for any public appearances. And I have uh, like different components there. For example, uh, I have four modules. First module is about goals, big and small. Mm. Uh, second module is about preparation and practicing. Uh, third model is about um, ener energy and relaxation because both are important. And um, uh, the last module is about visualization. And I, you know, I give uh, tools, different tools for each of that, uh, for each of that areas. And the idea is for everyone to create the puzzle of confidence. Mm -hmm. For example, from breathing exercise I give, you can choose two, which you will use all the time. Uh, for example, you will choose uh, box breathing and power posing for every time you appear on stage. These are one of the or, or this this is one of the examples. By the way, this is my combo. <laughs> I do uh, some physical exercises, breathing exercises, and power posing before I go on stage. Mm -hmm. And I suggest everyone to create a puzzle like that. So, what is your um, what is your magic? How do you create that confidence state in yourself anytime you need to make a presentation? And you can make that, you know, in 15 minutes, in five minutes, to, so to have a longer version, a shorter version. But if you have tools, you can do that. Hmm. Love that. Oh, okay. thank you. And, you know, I'm really curious. Uh, it sounds fascinating. Uh, definitely. I'll definitely check out <laughs> your, your your program that's st starting soon and I'm inviting whoever's watching us to please check it out it's online fully online so you have no excuse <laughs> yeah thank you so much buddy. <laughs> uh, you're also a TEDx speaker's mentor and I'm very curious because uh, I know nothing about the TEDx world and a lot of people who watch this are a Toastmasters member can you tell us more about the difference between a Toastmasters speech and a TEDx talk please yes sure um 
Oh, by the way, recently we had a case uh, with Toastmasters contest, and I just noticed a clear difference uh, between them because we had uh, a pretty much Toastmaster speech on the first place uh, as a contest result, and a little bit of, uh, I would say, a TEDx speech uh, at the second place. Because um, I see that uh, Toastmaster speeches. They, are, uh, they tend to be inspirational, like with a lot of storytelling, with some acting, with, uh, you know, so uh, persuasiveness. And um, so I would, I would mention that like acting. So sometimes it's overacting for me. Uh, and TEDx speeches are very often, they're more factual and uh, they are dedicated. So for example, Toastmaster speeches are more inspirational. And I would say that TEDx speeches are more factual, researched, uh, um, proven, like research proven. And they often uh, tend to have a call to action and to change something like in, uh, not only to be inspired, but to take a specific action after uh, the speech is done, the talk is done and the speaker is out of stage. So um, they have a lot of storytelling as well, like engaging moments. By the way, I think TEDx speeches, TED and TEDx speeches, they created a fashion for storytelling. Okay. I would say so because they use storytelling a lot. Mm -hmm. But there is another component in TEDx speeches, which is crucial uh, for all everything what is said there to be proven, uh, to be factual, uh, to be uh, research-based and uh, preferably persuasive to take action. For example, when I coach TEDx speakers, um, I all the time tell them to come up with some call to action in the very end. Like sometimes we start with that. So what do you want to do with your idea? What is the goal of your idea? What do you want people to do? How do you want them to change their mind when you're done? And yeah, so I would say just master speeches are more inspirational and they can change life, you know, well, if you will catch the mood and if you will catch the message. Mm -hmm. And static speeches are more uh are more factual more more persuasive for me because they have combo mm -hmm. they have wonderful combo of being uh, a wonderful star a great stories for example but also uh something like really grounded really grounded mm -hmm. and uh, there is no woo -hoo, woo -hoo there like uh preferably mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is my idea of the difference okay thank you thank you for clarifying i'm educated now <laughs> i know the difference Okay. Okay. So let's go somewhere completely different with this. Um, yeah. Okay. You are half Russian and half Ukrainian, right? Yeah. And um, the Russian and Ukrainian conflict started over a year ago now. Uh, you know the exact number of days. What is it? How many days? Uh, today is 434th day, but usually I count the days. You're right. Yeah. We're connected on social media and... Um, yeah, I count the days. You're one of the people um, that I follow who still post images of the conflict when others stopped. So I guess you feel very strongly about it. Can you tell us what this war means to you? you How has it affected your life? <clears throat> this is... Uh, this is a tough point and uh, you know we talked that very often I appear like a cheerful person mm -hmm. and this is still true but for example last year was you know absolutely devastating year for me because of that uh, war and uh, when the war started um, I had a feeling that I cannot breathe properly and I was couple of months I was functioning on the you know like only at the surface level so I was doing what I'm obliged to do or uh, fulfilling my job of applications uh, I don't know with my clients or trainings and taking care of my family but I was you know um, under some enormous 
uh, enormous layer of mud. I had a feeling that I cannot breathe for a couple of months mm -hmm. and it was so tough. This war, first of all, it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and I understand this is like a politics game and I, I that was un, unimaginable for me that something like that can happen. And um, I think, uh, so first of all, this is a crazy imperial Russian war. And for me, this is all about keeping, I don't know, Soviet Union or bringing back Soviet Union and keeping Ukraine uh, with Russia, which is impossible in my consideration. And this is say they you know for example russian uh, regime they say that they save people right russian speaking people but i'm i'm russian speaking person who uh, left ukraine eight years ago when when the hybrid part of the war started uh be because of that uh situation which was you know when it all started, like I, we were living in Odessa and we were planning to live there. Uh, but when it all started, we decided to go to Poland. So because we we could not uh, we could not have imagined to ourselves to live in, uh, if something would happen like it happened in Donetsk or Lugansk, if something like that will happen in Odessa, and there was a tension. Like Russia intended to to provoke something like that in Odessa as well, so I'm st I'm strongly opposed all what is going on. I remind people. I try. You ask me what day it is now because I try to remind people every day what day of that unbearable war is today. Like for people to remember that, to know that that is still going on because it is still going on every day. People die, civilians die every day in Ukraine because of that crazy uh, dictatorship idea in Russia, dictatorship regime decision in Russia. I cannot, for me, this is unimaginable. Uh, I want to stop counting the days and I will stop count when Ukraine will win the war. Yes. So your mouth to God's ears, uh, Lana. Um, I, I mean, imagine somehow you must feel torn with the, with the whole thing because I guess you're both, you're Russian and you're Ukrainian, right? So anyway, yes. you're in yes. my uh, prayers and you have all my support, Lana. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, this is this is this is addition for me. This is like additional toughness of that is that I know I'm not guilty for that. Mm, but I'm still Russian and I know that I feel like I am somehow responsible for that. And I'm partially Ukrainian and it hurts me all, every day. And my husband, my kids are Ukrainian, Ukrainians. And so uh, the war will stop and uh, the war will stop. And, you know, on the other side, when it all happened, what we saw that was amazing support with uh, from enormous number of people all over the world. You know, we were here in Poland and what started, people started to call, like, I don't know, manager of my son kindergarten called me uh, like in few hours that, that morning asking how we can help. And we were, you know, gathering uh, the, um, the aid with the whole parent, with the whole kindergarten parent, uh, parents crowd and you know riding here and there and like people started to and I I got a lot of calls because people uh, knew we came from Ukraine and the level of support was enormous and uh, Poland just opened the borders you know they say just come uh, to to all the Ukrainians this first they said come or even without a passport then come with a no, so come with a uh, foreign passport, then come with any passport, then come with any document, then come with pets. And that was, you know, like opening the border fully. So, and I'm just, that was both devastating, but it brought so much hope for, for all the people around and all around the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I witnessed it because um, Poland, well, they've been there many times, Poland, so they definitely understand uh, your plight. And um, anyhow, 
actually that brings me to my uh, my last question really if someone is watching us right now and feels wherever they are in the world because yes what's happening in ukraine is it's happening but there's also things happening in sudan things happening in africa like oh, the whole world is on fire okay and i think it's yes. for millennials if someone is watching right now and feels discouraged with the world and doesn't see any light in sight what would you like to tell them please Hmm. Um, recently I've been helping to prepare uh, one speech and actually the speech uh, was about our world whether it is re really bad everything is bad and getting worse or actually it's better and you know there is a certain research which shows that the world is getting better, sometimes because of the news spread and uh, what is going on nearby, and we just feel uh, it's, it's getting worse and worse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, what is going on with humanity, we are every day getting better. I just hope that all all that things happen because of bad decisions like wars, right? And uh, we will we will cure that somehow. Uh, if to if we disregard that, we uh, grow enormously in many in many points. For example, you know the level of world po uh, poverty. So. Uh, I just was uh, surprised to know, like, there was a kind of quiz, and that was in the speech I, I helped to prepare. Like, do you think it doubled, it stayed the same, or it just decreased twice in recent years? And it decreased twice, like, globally. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think everything is bad because of the wars and, you know, uh, or the news, and only bad news sell, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would say uh, still world is getting better. Of course, we have um, a lot of steps to do to get this uh, done and we can start with ourselves. So I would say to people there, so don't worry, it looks bad, but it's getting better. And what we can do, we can start with ourselves. Even talking about the war, I mentioned how I was astonished I, and I was astonished with support of people all around the world and nearby, first of all, nearby. And we can start with a small circle around. I would say, don't worry, it gets better and start with your circle. Mm. That's it. Amen. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is the next step for Lana Ivanova, please? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, Patty, I recently got an idea that I do what I do uh, because I, I I want to help as many people as possible to to unmute themselves to you know to to be seen um, to be persuasive, and uh, I came up with a funny idea that uh, also because I work a lot with non-native speakers, uh, I that I want to create a global community of bold and awesome imposters, non-native English speaking imposters. Uh, because I would say that uh, we uh, non-native English speakers, we very often feel that insecurity. And as I work with people, I see uh, this is everywhere. And I want to, uh, to support uh, that people specifically, who are people like I am, and who can use English to open many doors, to connect with a lot of people around the world. Like we are here connecting, uh, speaking English, being on different, uh, at different continents, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to help people to connect um, around the globe, and specifically to create that uh, community of bold and awesome non-native English speakers imposters <laughs> i love it so much lana oh yes i recently shared a post about feeling like an imposter so totally i would belong in your group in your global community <laughs> and finally if someone in the audience would like to follow you reach out to you or join your speaker defreeze program what is the best way 
Uh, you can go, I would invite everyone who wants to connect uh, to go to my site, uh, lanaivanova.com or go on Instagram because I'm pretty active there and I love to connect with people on Instagram. And my handle is lana.ivanova.com dot nova so i would be happy to connect with you um there because you know that's an open platform for connection yes definitely oh my god i had such a wonderful time let me share my key takeaways before i let you all go <laughs> oh yeah oh, takeaways yes I, yes i took a lot of notes uh, lana <laughs> God. We're sharing too many great, oh, too much gold for me not, not to take notes. <laughs> so, my dear friend, if you're struggling, do not take the long way. Make a shortcut if you're afraid. Join a public speaking group <laughs> or the speaker's defeat program. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes. If you want to be memorable, number one, take pauses and breathe. Number two, make sure you have a solid opening and closing. And three, Use storytelling, uh, short, sharp, concise, with an effective punchline. Yeah. Also, if you lost, you want to do great things, but you don't know where to start, look for inspiration and mentoring. Mm -hmm. If uh, you're feeling overwhelmed and overloaded, get organized, my dear. Get organized and secure your children, <laughs> if you have any. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. <laughs> And um, also, even if things look bad out there, the world is getting better. Start with yourself. You're not alone. And just start with a smart circle, a small circle, and it will spread all around the world. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Lana, before we go? I uh, I would suggest uh, I would I would suggest everyone to if it is possible in any moment um, to go a little bit lighter, uh, you know, to to uh, to get away out of additional seriousness, and I think this helps a lot, whether yeah, for for our imposter feelings or for our better performance on stage. So if you can get a little bit lighter and take that seriousness behind the brackets if you can yes 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 to that <laughs> thank you lana so much oh god i, had to, I cannot wait to edit and rewatch this it's just so good and i'm excited for a friend who gets to who got to who will get and got to see this um dear thank friend. you so much that oh, was oh that was a pleasure <laughs> dear friend thank you for watching i hope you've been as inspired by Lana's words and presence as I was. And I will leave you with this. The power of your voice can change the world. Find it and use it. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Thank you.